So when I got divorced, I was terrified to start dating again. Like I just, it, the idea of talking to men made me like break out in hives. Partly because my ex was extremely controlling and I was never allowed to talk to men like in public. I was like afraid to even make eye contact with men in public. And so the idea of sitting across from the table from a man for an hour or two at dinner or drinks and like talking to him truly made me afraid. About six months after the divorce, I was just sort of like struggling to feel any emotions at all. I was kind of getting back into myself because I went through a lot of trauma. And so when I felt ready, I downloaded dating apps and I just started swiping. And I talked to a lot of guys online before I decided to meet someone in person. Because like I said, the whole idea of talking to a man gave me anxiety. Bam. Her man not wanting her to talk to other men was actually a wise policy. Oh, here come my female viewers. That is so insecure. Oh, really? And why do women in relationships start huge arguments and throw around accusations when their men are talking to other women? Well, that's different. Those other women are trying to sleep with our men. <clears throat> yeah, I can totally see the difference. Apparently what's good for the geese isn't good for the gander. Not to mention this queen went through a lot of trauma. Somehow every woman claims the same thing using similar buzzwords. My question to all these queens who get out of toxic relationships is why do you look for the same types of men when you swipe right on those dating apps? Oh, silly me. Women are always the victims and they select dating abusers to prove it. Once the texting felt okay, I moved on to phone calls and then FaceTime. Now, from my experience, being on dating apps for the past six months, off and on, I don't think most men on there are looking for anything serious. I would say 99% of them don't want a relationship. So it's really honestly a good way to just step your feet back into dating. I really think once you meet someone that you feel like conversation is easy with and you've done a FaceTime and you've done the phone calls and he asks you out, I think you just have to go. If you're too afraid to go by yourself, have a friend go to the same location and walk in, you know, five minutes after you and sit down semi near you so that if you need an out, you have an out. I would also not start with a dinner date. I would start with drinks or coffee. And it sounds stupid, but like for me personally, just practicing dating and getting used to it was all I wanted to do at first. I was not looking for a relationship. I'm going to acknowledge giving her points for A, deciding first dates should be over drinks. That was a smart move. Ladies, let me point out, coffee dates are the easiest dates for you to leave if you feel uncomfortable. It's safer. And B, she wasn't looking for anything serious starting off. That can be interpreted several different ways, one of which could be vetting. Although, in another video, she admitted to dating multiple men at the same time. Him, 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 her, him, him, bodies, 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 bodies! That just doesn't add up to vetting. Most men dating single moms aren't looking for LTRs. It's like going to a farm to buy eggs and milk. You don't want to commit to the cow or chicken. You just pay for what you want. And I got hate for that. I got people being like, you're not ready for a relationship. How dare you be out there dating? Blah, blah, blah. You need to heal. But for me, this was a part of the healing process. I would advise you not to drink too much on a date, but having a glass of wine while I'm getting ready always helps calm my nerves. Other than that, I think you just have to look at dating as an experience in and of itself. I have tried to make it something that I just have fun doing. Making TikToks about it makes it more fun for me, but I don't go into dates anymore thinking maybe this is my soulmate, my future husband. Like you go into it like that, you're going to be disappointed over and over and over again. You just have to look at it as like, I'm going to go on dates just to have a good night tonight and see what happens. And if it's horrible, then I'll live to tell the tale. And as long as you're being safe, you're genuinely going to be okay. Obviously, don't let him pick you up from your house. Don't get in a car with him, even an Uber. And don't go to his house on the first date. Don't any of you men in the comments try to shame this queen by saying she is a carousel writer or say she is giving out thought tips. She said it herself. She has to practice dating. Obviously, it's a needed skill like typing or cooking. And this poor queen got hate for it because those haters didn't understand the necessity of dating for her healing process. Kind of like when an injured jogger decides to go for a run through a minefield. I can see the logic in it. Moving on.
Okay, fam, I don't know the backstory here. It's not clear who initiated the divorce. If I go off speculation, I would do it in the most logical sense to draw a theory. Statistically speaking, 70 to 80% of all divorces were initiated by women, depending on where you live. On top of that, I covered in a previous audit, breakup regret is more common in women than in men. One off that, I can only assume she put herself in her current situation and is getting the emotional backlash from it. Although that is only a theory. More importantly, this is a reality for many queens out there who figure I can do better and end up more broken than a McDonald's ice cream machine. Hey ladies, if you believe in magic, when you believe in magic, and the hope you do. That's all on you. But getting back into the dating game as a single mom basically guarantees your dating life is going to be like ordering from the value menu. Moving on. Yeah, I wish somebody would have prepared me for the dating world um, after my divorce. I had no idea that so many grown ass men still like to play petty games. Like, seriously, I am 100% content by myself. I am very capable of making myself happy and providing for myself. I am busy. I don't have time for games. I am trying my best to be successful in my job. I'm trying to build a home for me and my kids. I'm trying to stay healthy. I'm trying to maintain relationships with my friends and my family. I don't have time for stupid games. I don't have time for it. So just throwing this out here. Um, if you want to come into my life to cause chaos and confusion, and to play stupid games, just leave me alone. Seriously. It's really that easy. Oh, queen. Are you sad that after leaving your ex-husband, dating doesn't revolve around you? I don't think I or any of my viewers have ever heard anything similar to this before. It is a true enigma that modern men don't roll out the red carpet for a woman who just proved she failed at maintaining a marriage and forced her children to the single mom life. Fam, dating apps should come with a pre-installed participation trophies for women who break up their families because of their feels. Don't you single men understand she just dragged her ex-husband through divorce court, probably financially crippled him for years, and took his children away so she can date all of you. What she did is serious. That means none of you grown men come a single mother's way playing petty games, like not offering to take care of her slash her kids or saying you want to take it slow on a relationship because of some silly vetting process or thinking her SMV is lower because of all the baggage she brings. Preach, sister, preach! Because we all know she is the prize here. And don't any of you men forget that. Just look at her resume if you doubt it. She can make herself happy. That's why she is dating, by the way. She has limited time to offer a man, which is a plus to any man. Boom. Don't come in her life, even though she is the one on the dating apps. I'm just saying, if you enjoy this audit, Click on the video in the end screen for more content. If you agree or disagree with anything about this audit, please let us know in the comments. I'm going to leave this audit right here. I'll see all of you in the next episode.